We are reading today uh, Shri Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse number 76. <coughs> o Varoru, nicely tied girl, when will the ocean of my bliss expand when I see you being decorated with flowers by joyful Krishna, the victor over Aristasura in a kunja with many blooming flowers and humming bees on the shining bank of your lake. O Varoru, nicely tied girl, when will the ocean of my bliss expand? When I see you being decorated with flowers, by joyful Krishna, the victor over Aristasura hmm. in a kunja with many blooming flowers and humming bees on the shining bank of your lake. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Before we continue to listen the commentary of Anantadas Babaji, maybe we can stop a little bit on these words to be absorbed in this scene. Where Raguna Das Goswami, like Tudla Simanjari, is looking to Krishna who is joyfully serving Radhika. So this is the position of Manjari. And she is very happy, or maybe we can say most happy, when she sees Krishna, but not independently, but in very specific situation, when he is joyfully is serving Shimati Radhika. So this is Manjari Bhav, where Manjaris are very pleased to observe Krishna's endeavor to please Shimati Radhika. And when Raghunath is saying, when will the ocean of my bliss expand? He doesn't wait his own bliss for his own happiness. He wants ocean of Ananda. He's desiring this ocean of Ananda. But this kind of Ananda or happiness in his heart or her heart is in connection with Radhika's happiness, not his own happiness. And Manjari's Bhav is like this. To give Radha, Radhika happiness, the pleasure, to also give the pleasure to Radha, Radha Smohan. And when they are together, Manjaris are very, very happy to see how they exchange the love, but also they are very happy to see how Krishna is very eager to please Srimati Radhika. So, this scene is giving Manjari's most 
blissful happiness. When they see how Krishna is sevaka, how Krishna wants to please his beloved. And in the beginning of the words, Tulsi Manjari is addressing Radhika Ovaroru. And sometimes different meanings of Varoru are, and they are very closed to different pastimes. And in these words, when Raghunath or Tulsi Manjari is addressing Radhika, O Varoru, he is pointing out in very intimate pastimes, when Radha and Mohan are together, alone in their most confidential room, Nivriti Nikonja. And he's, he's addressing Radhika Ovaroru, nicely tied girl. So in this addressing, he is explaining Radhika's adolescent age. Not the age when she is a small lolly or baby or girl with the seven, eight years, but he's addressing Radhika in the sense you are Varoru. So it means you are very mature in your teenage. Years. You are Kishori. And because you are Kishori in your mature teenage, your ties, your ties are very, uh, very nice. Because you develop maturity of your form. This Kishori age of Shimati Radhika and Kishori age of her lover is the object of meditation for those devotees who want to be absorbed in serving Yugala Kishore in their Parakya Bhav or Madhurya Rasa in their Parakya Bhav. Paraki above, this forbidden love is most intense just in this age, actually. It's not possible to Radhika and Mohan to exchange their Paraki Baba when they are kids. But when they are grown up, teenagers, not grown-up persons, but teenagers, they have proper feelings, most intense feelings, for exchanging this parakya bhav. And when Rad Raghunath is exp uh, addressing Radhika, Varoru, he is just in a, some other way, hidden way, is speaking, you are in the proper age, for exchanging this beautiful, sublime Parakya Bhav. Because all your body is Kishore. Your thighs, your breasts are hard, not like a little girl. Your hair is more curly because your emotions are so intense. Your restless eyes are even more restless, always looking for Mohan. Your gait, your movements are very attractive to Mohan. So, 
Addressing Radhika with Varoru has many deep meaning and by listening our Acharyas and meditating on their words, Sadaka can get some drops of Radhika's real form and also the nature behind this Kaishora, Kishora form. Specific emotions and nature of young girl. And this young girl is giving the Krishna most pleasure. She is the most dear to him. Although there are millions, billions of other girl, girls, she is most sweet and most beautiful. And he wants to serve her, giving to please her. And his service is giving the satisfaction, happiness, ananda to Manjaris. So I want just to say something on this verse, because through the words of these words, we can get so many impressions, feelings, which can help to our budget. If someone wants to share something, or Gurudev wants to add, Gopinath, whoever, please be free. Very beautiful. Thank you so much. Very beautiful. <laughs> Gopinath, but this is not sharing. Guru <laughs> 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 told me to say this, so I'm just following him. <laughs> then we can continue. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunata perceived the water sports of the divine couple. After playing in the water of Radha Kum, Radha and Krishna and their girlfriends come back on the shore and the manjaris anoint them with oil, massage them, bathe them again, arrange their hair and change their clothes. In this verse, Mohana will single-handedly decorate Sri Radha in a kunja on the bank of Sri Radha Kum. How incomparably beautiful is the bank of Sri Radha Kum. There is a sweet kunja there flanked by enchanting trees and wine, bearing so many different kinds of blooming flowers that are surrounded by swarms of thirsty humming bees. In this kunja, Arista Jai Krishna will dress Swamini. Oh, nicely tied girl. Arista Jai will expand the ocean of my bliss 
by decorating you with flowers. Radhika's maidservants don't like all kinds of bliss. Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj defined the nature of happiness of the Gopikas as follows. When the gopis go to see Krishna, they do not desire happiness. And this increases their happiness millions of times. They feel a million times more happiness than Krishna feels when he sees them. <coughs> They are not looking for their own happiness. And that exactly increases their happiness. There is only one explanation for this paradox. The joy of the gopis lies in Krishna's happiness. The gopis think Krishna obtained so much pleasure by seeing me. And this thought makes their bodies and faces blossom. Daddy, we should stop here because this is the crucial point in which we can understand the pure, pure selfless love which is present only in spiritual world, but not only in spiritual world, only in Vrindavan. And please, Rasamai, we can go again from the beginning of this paragraph, from Chaitanya Charitamrita, mm -hmm. sentence by sentence. When the gopis go to see Krishna, they do not desire happiness. And this increases their happiness millions of times. When the gopis go to see Krishna, gopis, we should stay here in this description, gopis, because they are deeply absorbed in Madhuryaras with Krishna. They don't desire happiness. So this is the difference between Prema and Kama. Kama, like a lust, material lust, always is desiring and hankering and looking for what? For its own happiness. Person who is coming, lusty, whatever he do, he is doing for his own happiness. Whatever he thinks, whatever he feels, in whichever relationship, he wants to be, he is doing for his own benefit and own happiness. This is natural for conditioned soul. Because conditioned soul is in the trap of material illusion and whatever he is doing, he is doing to be in the center. in the center of his own thoughts, in the center of his own desires, to satisfy his own senses. I, 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 I am always in my personal center. And Acharyas are comparing this kind of strong urge in conditioned soul to always satisfy his senses like an iron. 
on another side, they're saying that the love which gopis, specifically gopis, have are pure love or prema. Whatever gopis are doing, they are doing for Krishna's pleasure. They are running to meet him because they know that they, he will be happy. He will feel ananda. When he sees them, how they are eagerly running towards her, how they are eagerly wants to meet him, and so on and so on. So this kind of love, selfless love, is compared with the gold. Because in the gold <laughs> is one of the most purest material. And not even that. Gold can be melted. And through this molting process, all impurities in the gold are more and more and more vanishing. And gold is most valuable thing in material life. So what does it mean actually? That love is compared, pure love is compared with gold and the love is most valuable thing. I heard Gurudev, how he said, the person who attained this pure love, this prema, this is the most richest person. He doesn't want anything else. He is completely satisfied with only this pure love, selfless love. And no one can disturb and provoke his another desires. So, Acharyas are saying that this prema, this pure love, selfless love, is ultimate goal of all different, of uh, human existence, ultimate goal. And we hear Again, how we read, the gopis go to see Krishna, they don't desire happiness. So this is the checking point for us sadhakas. If I really want to be Saki or Manjari, or shortly to say one kind of gopi, am I ready? for this position that I don't want any kind of happiness for myself. Because if the whiff of my personal desire for my own happiness exists in my heart, it means that I'm not ready for Gopiba. And what's happening? It's explained in the, in the next part of the sentence. And this increases their happiness millions of times. This is paradox. They, do, they don't want their own happiness. They only want Krishna's happiness. And exactly this desire to give him happiness increases automatically their happiness. This is paradox for conditioned soul. But for, but for someone who attained perfection, or someone who is deeply absorbed in his rati and ashakti, this conception is very clear. And it's very understandable.
and acceptable. Because if we cannot accept this basic thing, it means that still Sadaka is under the strong influence of bodily consciousness. Acceptance that Gopi Bhav means complete selfless love slowly and surely remove this false identification I am this body. body. And it's not possible to enter in Gopi Bhav to accept this female, pure female nature and feelings with mentality, I am enjoyer, I am controller. Rasamai, do you? Yeah. The next sentence, please. They feel a million times more happiness than Krishna feels when he sees them. This is another paradox. Because they are giving him pleasure. Automatically, without their own desire, they feel millions times of happiness than Krishna can feel. So what does it mean? <coughs> that someone who loves is relishing more the love than object of love. Someone who is hankering for love, who is hankering for his beloved, is relishing the more intensity of love than object of love. And understanding this, in Krishna's heart appears desire. Okay, that's enough. I don't want to be only object of love. I want to become someone who is in love. Who feels this intensity of love. We say subject or ashray or devotee. Someone who is reservoir of this love. Because in that way, I will feel millions of times more intense love than if I am just object of love. So he became Gora. To relish this kind of love, of reservoir of love, the source of love. And this is Shimatiratik. But again, we are coming on the beginning. This is also Gopiba. And Radhika is the most prominent of all Gopis. But here in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj just want to make a clear picture and differences. What is really pure love of the gopis so that devotees understand if I want this kind of love it's mandatory to change this male consciousness that I'm not enjoyer and I'm not controller and accepting the female feature Female four, pure female four, is conditioned to be in this ocean of pure love and serve pure devotional service. This is condition 
And Bhakti Noda Thakur, so many times we heard this, is singing, I am rejecting, I am leaving this mentality that I am male. But it doesn't mean only male. I rejecting this men mentality that I am also female, that I am this body. I need transcendental, spiritual body, which is embodiment of pure, selfless love and devotional service. So for this kind of proper understanding, we need a time. And for this kind of practicing in daily life, we also need a time. And all the time, we need the Kripa and always ready to accept that Kripa. If we have our own ideas, it means that we are just theoretically accepting this Gopi Bhava in general sense. We should accept and then we should try to live according to that. Then, my dear, please someone share something. It's such an important paragraph. Such important paragraph. Without understanding this paragraph and deeply accepting this paragraph and explanations in our heart, it's very hard to go further in spiritual life. They are not looking for their own happiness and that exactly increases their happiness. There is only one explanation for this paradox. The joy of the gopis lies in Krishna's happiness. The gopis think Krishna obtained so much pleasure by seeing me. Krishna obtained so much pleasure by seeing me. Not I attain so much pleasure because of seeing him. The gopis' all existence is to give the pleasure not to take a pleasure. And this is the great paradox for conditioned soul. Because it's paradox for conditioned nature. It's not paradox for the pure nature. Because conditioned nature is always to take. To take not to give. If I'm just giving, then I will become inferior. But the spiritual nature or spiritual personality is always giving and giving and giving mood. And we can see from the examples of our Acharyas, they always have been in this giving, giving, giving mood. Our Gurudev is our own living example. He is giving, giving, giving. If someone needs help, spiritual help, he is giving spiritual help. If someone needs some social help, he is giving social help. If someone needs mental help, psychological help, he is always ready to help. Ultimately, to bring that person to the spiritual level. And we, God brothers, before I left Vrindavan, I spoke with Gopinath, Shyamapriya, and other 
very close associate Gurudev's. We are all amazed how he is ready to give 24 7, 24 8. In the morning, in the noon, in the afternoon, in the evening, even in the late evening. We are amazed. And maybe someone who is conditioned can do it one day, three, two days, three days, seven days, and after that he will collapse. That's the truth, at least in my case. <coughs> but when we are looking our perfect example, then we understand he is not on that level. This is my level, but not his level. And he is teaching us the giving is the process of devotion. To give the pleasure to Radha Mohan by serving the others. But pleasure to Radha Mohan, not to give the pleasure to me, but to, by serving us, he is giving the pleasure to Radha Mohan. And like result, we can say like result is that he is in more mood of giving, intense giving. So we should try to at least accept little of this mood, because this is Gopi Bhav, generally speaking. This is Gopi Bhav. I'm not speaking now about Sakis and Manjaris. Gopi Bhav, first Gopi Bhav, to understand what does it mean to be in Gopi Bhav. Krishna obtains so much pleasure by seeing me. I gave him a pleasure, not that he gave to me pleasure. And because of this thought, this kind of specific thinking, her bodies and faces are blooming. Not because of their own happiness. No, because Krishna is happy, they are blooming. Their faces are becoming so bright. Because through their blooming faces, they are showing him their own feelings, intense feelings, to give him a pleasure. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, please. Who is talking? I cannot see. <coughs> oh, yeah. Radhe. Uh, it's, we left us alone. Now we feel very empty without you here. I was just feeling now, and you were saying like um, this happiness, which is there in the face of the devotee and also of this Ishta Dev, in our case, Radhamon. And I was thinking like, how do we know that Radhamon are happy with us? It's actually when they give us seva, then we know they are happy. And we can feel that they are most happy with our Guru Deva because they're giving him 24 7 Seva. <laughs> he, he cannot even escape, <laughs> not even a second. So much love, Anurag is there between the devotee and his beloved Ishta Dev that non stop Seva is coming, and then it becomes our permanent natural condition. Unnatural is that we, if we don't have Seva, that means that something is lacking in me. If no seva is coming, that means my love, my relationship is still not there. I'm still maybe too selfish. I'm not selfless. I'm not happy for them. I'm only seeking for my own happiness. 
but the moment I want to make them happy, then they will get more happy and give me more seva. So I feel we always have to aspire for this, that we should always beg for more seva because that increases our feelings and deepens our connection to our Gurudev, but also to our Ishtadev. No Gurudev, what do you, what do you say? All very nice. So very nice. Thank you, Bhaiya. So actually they are giving you, they are sending you all the time seva. You don't see anything outside of them, Gurudev. Like no, not a single moment you feel that you're outside of Radha Mohan doing something? Vishambara. <laughs> Vishambara. Vishambara is everywhere. Where, where I see, I see you. Did they call it Shambhai? Vishambara is no any place where you are not there. I do your seva. Radhe. When Krishna is happy, then Radharani is happy. And when both Radha and Krishna are happy, the Sakis are happy. But when Radharani comes out as the best, then the Kinkaris are happy. I read that one more time. When Krishna is happy, then Radharani is happy. And when both Radha and Krishna are happy, the Sakis are happy. But when Radharani comes out as the best, then the Kinkaris are happy. When Radha... <laughs> yeah. When Rasamaya Mohana expertly serves Swamini by decorating her, the ocean of their bliss expands. So now we see the differences. Radhika is one-pointed. to make Krishna happy. And when he is happy, then Radhika is happy. This is one pointed in love. If there is no one pointless love, then we cannot, we cannot speak about real love. But when person possess this one-pointness of the heart, of the feelings, of the love, to the object of love, then we can say he is real lover. He knows how to love. He knows how to give to be loved because he is selfless and always one-pointed. And Radhika is the perf perfect example of all other gopis. We were talking now before about Gopi Bhava, but now we are coming to the point of Shimati Radhika, who is the main gopi. And all other gopis are just her expansions. And it's Baba is saying, when Krishna is happy, then Radharani is happy. And Radharani has so many 
ways to make him happy, unlimited ways to make him happy. He even cannot understand in which way she will make him happy. He is always surprised. And for that reason, because she is unlimited ocean of giving happiness, giving pleasure, he wants to relish her feelings and Baba and become Goranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he wants to become this ocean of loving devotion. Not only receiver, but the ocean of loving devotion, who is giving, giving and giving. So this is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we should also try to go deep in his mood, because his mood is also our Gurudev's mood. And if disciple is properly connected with Guru, his own mood, but Gurudev's mood, then he is true disciple. Because he is breathing like a Gurudev, his heart is beating like a Gurudev, his, his waves of emotions are swaying like a Gurudev's. And in that way, he can be blessed to the, become real Radha Dasi, Anu Dasi, Anu Dasi, Anu Dasi. Like Gurudev said, he is not a goal, but he is a person who is bringing disciple to the goal. And from the beginning, he is teaching and infusing him with proper thoughts, proper feelings, and showing him how to act. I'm not talking only this because Gurudev is present here. I'm talking always this, even when he is not present. And I don't care if devotees are agree with that or they don't agree. Because everywhere is written, and this is the only practice which I personally try, although imperfectly, to practice, but also I want to associate with only those who are practicing the same way. This is my suggestive song. When Krishna is happy, then Radharani is happy. Then, when both Radha and Krishna are happy, the Sakis are happy. So, Sama Sneha. They equally love Radha and Krishna and they want to give them pleasure because they know. <coughs> they know. They are the most happy when they are together. Even Sakis, they know that. And they equally love Radha and Krishna. But sometimes, because they are equal with Sri Radhika, knowing their deep, deep, deep hidden desire in the heart, Radhika sometimes tell them, okay, please give him message in my name, give him a message, but just go alone with him. And her girlfriends, voluntarily and happily, is running to Krishna to give him a pleasure, but independently, 
without Srimati Radhika. They want to give him a pleasure with their bodies, with their heart, with their embraces, because they are Sakis, and this is Saki Bal. They want to give him pleasure, although they are girlfriends of Srimati Radhika. Then we have a third category, let's say category. But when Radharani comes out as the best, then the Kinkaris are happy. Because they are always pro-Radhika, always on the side of Radhika. <coughs> and when Radhika wins in a loving battle, Kinkari is out of ecstasy. They are so happy, they are so blissful, they are glorifying Radhika, Jai Shri, Jai Shri, Jai Shri. They are not glorifying Krishna in that moment, they are glorifying Srimati Radharani. And the next sentence is, when Rasamaya Shyama expertly serves Swamini by decorating her, the ocean of Kinkari's bliss expands. So it's very clear. They are most, most, most happy when Radhika comes out as the best, but also when they see, when they observe with little giggling even, how Mohan is trying to decorate Swamis. This is the best vision for Manjaris. Radhe Radhe Guranga Sundaraj. Yes, Baba. So we see here uh, that <coughs> exclusivity of Manjaris is uh, to see how Krishna is uh, completely in the mood of sub submission, submissing to, uh, to Radharani. Is it correct uh, that they also, but they also feel have this feeling when uh, Radharani, when Krishna is happy, when Radharani is give ha happiness to him, and also when they are together, uh, Krishna and Radharani, uh, Kinkari also can feel also that. Yes. Manjaris are happy. Also, when the Radharani is happy by giving Krishna pleasure, because they are happy of her feelings, not of his feelings. Because Manjaris knows Radhika is burning from desire to give the pleasure to Krishna. And now she can give him the pleasure and she is happy. So Manjaris are also happy because Radhika is happy by giving him a pleasure. But when she is, when she wins this love battle or in different loving games, Manjaris are in ecstasy because their goal is also to put them together, Yuga Lakishore. When they are together, this is the goal which is fulfilled by Manjaris. Manjaris doesn't want to serve only Radhika, which kind of devotional service is. No, they want to put her lover in her closeness, 
they want to arrange their meeting. And this is the love of Manjaris. They don't say, no, I don't like Krishna so much, I only like you, so I only want to be with you and we have to be alone. I don't care for your boyfriend. No, this is not Manjariba. I love you so much that I understand the deep desire in your heart that you are completely in love with this boy. And because I love you, I want to fulfill your desire. I know that my Dayanidiji is in love with Anandamai, and I want everything to do because I love him so much. I want always to give a chance him to be with his beloved wife. This is expression of love, but one-pointed love. Kinkari loves Radhika one-pointedly, and because of that love, she knows all the feelings of Srimati Radhika. And her feelings are also one-pointed to give the pleasure to her beloved. So this is the perfect circle of love in which everyone has his own fixed place. We say Staiba, but this is the fixed emotional place. You, uh, one thing, inspiration came from this. Um, how do we that Swamini is victorious? How do we know that she is Jaisri? How, how do we know? And just came, I'm saying obvious, but we can glorify a little bit. Because her wave of emotion is always superior. So, Manjari's, are we, you can hear? Oh, it disappears. The last time. Wow. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Can you hear us? Yes, now we can hear you, but I think picture disappeared. Yeah. Yes, so, so just this glorification came to my heart that how we know she's Jai Shri means she's always emotionally, always her waves are, her feelings are always superior. So how Manjaris know, how, how they get this pride in their heart, they will see because Mohan, he will shiver. And then, you know, he, his hands will tremble and he will get the goose bumps. Only by her look, you know, only by her glance. So Manjari is no soon we have the victory. Small things, like fe all feelings. Then he will faint. Then they have to again wake him up. <laughs> so in the end, who is happy? Krishna is happy. Mohan is happy. But Radharani is victorious always. Because her emotions, her waves are so high, he has no chance. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Gopika. Mohan wants to be defeated. This is his deep desire to be defeated. Because in that way, 
when he is defeated, he can receive all Radhika's love. If he is not defeated, he cannot receive so much love as she can give to him. And when he is defeated, Radhika wants to defeat him even more. Because she knows he needs my love more. He has to relish even more. And he will be happy even more. So this is constant battle. We say love battle between them. And through different pastimes, we can remember and also glorify our Radhika Jaya Shri. In different pastimes. You mentioned just few, but actually in different pastimes. And now it's coming to me. Actually, Radhika is always, always winning in love games. Sometimes it can look that Krishna win. But it's just because she allowed him. <coughs> she is always winning. Even when she is pacified, calm, she is winning. Because one glance from the corner of her eyes can bound him and stun him or put him in to spin around himself. So this is the winning of my Swamini. Because he, this boy, this guy, is bound tightly bound by her love. And Tulasi is saying, O Varoru, nicely tied girl, with your tights, you firmly bound your lover. But not only with tights, will all your appearance Sweetness, beauty, elegance, movements of each part of your body. You bound him. And because of that, you are victorious for King Karis. So Krishna is most victorious when he is defeated. Yes. Ra and Radhika is most victorious when he defeats him. For the king carries. For the king carries, of course. For the king. <laughs> yes. I see also like that. <coughs> because when Krishna sometimes win, no parrot is glorifying his glories. No birds are glorifying his glories. Even the monkeys are stunned. Complete silence is in Vrindavana. No one is glorifying his glories. But when Radhika wins, then all Vrindavana is glorifying. All living, moving or unmoving beings are glorifying Radhika's victory. And in that scene, Kinkaris are getting the more intense pleasure. My Swami is... There is one Asura is there. Agatha, right? Yeah? Uh, you in mean the in words, the words? Arista Shura. In the words. Yes. Krishna is a only win with Asuras. <laughs> but when, when, when we win, we want to share this win, then it gives us great joy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yes, so I was just uh, telling to Guru that like when you are playing in a team and you score, let's say you want to celebrate it with your teammates, but in the Nikunja, Mohan is alone. <laughs> he has no, nobody to celebrate even if he wins. <laughs> but Radharani Rani has her kinkaris with her all the time. So the joy of winning is even higher when you can celebrate with your teammates. <laughs> I know if that was audible. Yeah, yeah, it was audible. Okay, but, okay. but this is the sarcastic way <laughs> of Manjari is how they are talking about Krishna. You are Victor like over Arista Sura. Yes. Like Gurudev say, you only can beat uh, demons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you are so big and important because of that. <laughs> but in front of my Jaya Shri, you are just trembling <laughs> during decoration of her neck, lotus feet, breasts, and so on. You are trembling. Oh, such a killer of Arista Jaya. So this is the way of closeness also and playfulness of manjaris or kinkaris. They're, they're speaking with Krishna in sarcastic, ironic way. They're joking with her, with him. And in that way, through these jokes, they are glorifying the victory of supreme love. You can kill the demons, yeah. but you, you cannot, sorry. I'm sorry, but you are always defeated in front of the love of my beloved Swamini. Yeah. <laughs> we can't see the Baruru. Died. And it's strong than you. <laughs> you are weak than myself. Yes. Radhika's ties are more stronger than your arms, my dear Mohan. <laughs> and your eye is also weaker than. <laughs> <laughs> you are very weak. Yeah. Completely weak. <laughs> Gurudev, when, when Mohan is trying to paint Radhika, he's doing stringer on her, his hand is so shaking, and Rupa and Tulsi are watching, and then Rupa says, Are yaar, tumse nahi hoga. You will not do. And she gives him just a, a gentle push to chalo, hato, mm. to go to the side, and he falls already on the floor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's how big his thighs are. <laughs> tumse nahi hoga. <laughs> so accompanied by their maid servant, Swamini and Mohana, enter into a sweet dressing kunja, which is full of blooming flowers that are surrounded by humming bees. Swamini, staring on Mohana's face, asked, Who will dress me today? Mohana says, Today I will do it. Just order me. Swamini gives her consent with a frown of her eyebrows. 
All right, you do it. In this way, she gives herself away. What an incomparable service to her beloved. Considering Bhav and Rasa, Bhava is the worshipper and Rasa is the worship. Shiradha is the empress of full Bhav and Krishna is the emperor of full Rasa. Because Shirada is the supreme worshipper, Aradhika, she is known in the Puranas and other scriptures as Radhika. No one knows how to worship like her. Mohana single-handedly decorates Swamini in a kunja on the bank of Shama Kund that is filled with buzzing bees. He seats his beloved on a jeweled throne and sits himself on her pedestal in order to be able to decorate her with handmade floral ornaments. The kinkaris pick different kinds of flowers and bring them to Krishna who measures the size of his plant ornament with his hand and imbues them with rasa through his rasika touch. Swamini sits down on her jeweled feet and lets her feet oscillate next to the pedestal. While Aristaji, Arista Jai, personally manufactures the floral earrings and places them on Swamini's limbs. Why does Tulasi remember Krishna's victory over the Arista demon in this verse? It was after Krishna killed the Arista demon during his manifest pastimes that Radhakund became manifest in order to preach the confidential glory of Priyaji. There is no place in Raja Mandala like Radhakund, where Krishna enjoyed so freely and confidentially with his Priyaji. This is why. Uh, what is Arista Sura? You remember? I don't remember Gurudev exactly what does it, what he pre represents. Yeah. Some bull, strong, ego. But I'm. I don't want to speculate. Bull or cow? Or cow. Bull. 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 Bull or cow. <laughs> Offense bull. to kill. Bull. Offense to kill. Oh. Why he kill? Because inside him, but Asura, hypocrite. Oh. Hypocrite cannot enter in a 
This is the problem of hypocrisy. They cannot understand Radha. And that makes him pure. So hypocrisy in our inside is not for Radha Kun. So he kill hypocrisy. In and out has to be one. Thank you, Gurudev. Yes. In and out. Outside, outside dharmic, but inside the demon mentality. Yes. Outside is, uh, yeah, that is hypocrisy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Remove Thank the hypocrisy. This is demon. <laughs> this is demon. So there is no place in the Vraja Mandala like Radhakum, where Krishna enjoys so freely and confidentially with his Priyaji. This is why Tulasi remembers Krishna here as Arista Jai. Although Krishna is such a great hero to defeat a strong and wild demon like Arista, he cannot protect himself against Sridharika's delectable beauty. Rasaraja Sri Krishna is greedy for rasa. Therefore, he serves Mahabhav. Tulasi just stands there, watching Nagara's expert service and floating in an ocean of rasa. Rasa Raj, he is the king of Rasa, but without serving Mahabhava, he cannot relish this Rasa. This is a secret, a great mystery. And Gurudev giving very often this practical example, ocean and waves. Without ocean, without waves, ocean is a flat. Is a very boring place. But when the waves appear, then everyone is attracted to the ocean. And even ocean can relish his, his own beauty through the waves of emotions of Shimati Radhika. So he needs to serve Mahava that he can relish his own rasa, his own position. like And then he is becoming rasa raj. Without Radhika, he is not rasa raj. He is just a rasa. But with strong emotions of Shimati Radha, uh, sorry, Shimati Radharani, which he is infuses in his heart, on his body, everywhere. He becomes relisher and the king of relisher, Rasa Raj. So he needs 
Radharani's mercy, Radharani's love to be complete. With the blink of her eye, Swamini tells Tulasi, Tulasi, aren't you doing anything? Tulasi replies with her meaningful glances. You found a good decorator now. Do we still, still have to serve you? Let us just float in oceans of bliss. Seeing you being served like that. Mohana now stands up on Radhika's pedestal and stands in between her thighs. Swamini experiences his touch. Mohana made seven thin garlands and now he wants to tie them behind Swamini's neck. But the strings break. Seeing this, Mohana restrings them and keeps his face next to Swamini's face, looking over her left shoulder to see whether he tied the strings properly or not. Normally, the moon and the lotus cannot be seen together. But now, the blue lotus Mohana's face is seen next to the moon, Radhika's face. There is no bound to the bliss. When Tulasi sees this, she feels the ocean of her spiritual bliss expanding. Tulasi calls Swamini Flaroru yeah. or nicely tied Maybe one. One small one is where you get here. It's just some one piece is Mohana Sen. Mohana stands between Radhika's thighs to hang a garland on her on breast. Order. Maybe I wait on me. We hear Sridhar Baya. Okay. Yeah. Mohana stands between Radhika's thighs to hang a garland on her breast. Swamini is little scared, so she tries to press her ties together. And in this way, she breaks another string of the flower garland. Mohana stays between Varoru's ties restringing the garland and hangs it on her again. Tulasi carefully watches so that she can learn the service from Mohana. And she can remind Swamini of this past time when she is separated from Mohana again. 
and thus immerse her in an ocean of bliss. She smiles slightly and calls her Varoru. Hearing this, Swamini both chastises and praises Tulasi with her glances. It is a consent combined with the rebuke. Here, Lalita, Vishaka, and the other Sakis are not present. Only Rupa, Tulasi, and the other Manjaris are there. There is no obstacle here to Shringara Rasa. Krishna, the personification of the erotic spiritual flavor, performing his Shringara, service of decorating Shrigarika. He is overwhelmed by bliss when he touches Varoru's excellent thighs. Rade, Rade, he is overwhelmed by bliss when he touches Varoru's excellent eye. Tulasi feels. Radhi? Yes. So we can see here that Krishna is addressed like Shingar Rasa. So it means that he is personification of this amorous spiritual flavor. And same Shringar Rasa, Krishna like a Shringar Rasa, is making this Shringar Ras ornamentation of embodiment of Mahabhava. So in the moment when Krishna is decorating Shir Mati Radhika. He is relishing complete Shringar Ras. And he is becoming also embodiment of this Shringar Ras by touching Radhika's body or by touched by her tights. In that moment, he is becoming embodiment of Shringarasa or amorous, intimate, amorous flavor rasa. So whatever comes in the contact with Mahabhava, we know it's becoming Mahabhava. And Radhika voluntary. She's allowing him to have such kind of experiences. Because she knows that it will give him a pleasure. Usually girls want to be decorated by their lovers or partners. And in that way they are enjoying. But we have here completely Another opposite feeling that by allowing Krishna to serve her, to decorate him, Radhika is blooming out of happenings because he is in ecstasy. And we can see here that in the beginning, Rasamai read that 
Tulsi also is learning from Krishna how to serve Radhika. Because she knows that it will come a time when my Radhika will be alone and I have to serve her. And I have to serve her just exactly like her lovers. Because in that way, I will always increase her feelings and remembrance on him. I have to learn how to touch him, uh, to touch her like he is doing. I have to learn how to massage her just exactly how he is doing. So Manjari, in this confidential situation, is learning also how to serve Radhika and always remember her on Krishna. And Manjaris are also praying to Sakis to teach them the art of service, <coughs> different service. But Rupa, Rag, uh, sorry, Raghunath is always praying only to Rupa Manjari how to learn this most confidential service in Nivriti Nikonja, sleeping room. Not from the Sakis, but directly to Rupa. And in that way, we can see how Kinkari is learning to serve by looking and observing Krishna, praying to Sakis, but also praying for most intimate confidential service to whom? To most confidential Kinkaris. So this is the complete art of devotional service in the mood of Manjarpa. And here we can see that because Sakis are not present in that moment, even Krishna, who is embodiment of Sringar Rasa, without obstacles, can be relaxed and serve ornament Radhika. Shringar, completely free of all obstacles, only in the presence of Manjaris. And he can allow himself to be overwhelmed with the bliss of this kind of ornamentation of beloved Swami. He can allow himself because no obstacles in the form of Sakis. <laughs> Tulasi feels Nagara's bliss in her own heart. Blessed is the service of Shirada. What more can be attained for the intermediary energy of the Lord, the individual souls in the spiritual world? This is the great gift of Mahaprabhu. Raghunata Dasa Goswami is the object of Sriman Mahaprabhu's limitless mercy. The Lord's heart melted when he saw how fixed Raghunath was in bhajan, prema, and renunciation. Indeed, the Lord got in Raghunathas the embodiment of renounced Vraja devotion. He was so pleased with Raghunath that he gave himself to him 
in the form of the Govardhan Shiva and the Kunjamana. After all, the Lord's blessed dissension served the purpose of distributing Bhakti Yoga that is deep with this passion and realization. Tulasi's bliss knows no bounds when she sees how expertly Nagara dresses Swami. That ocean of her spiritual bliss ever increases. She Haripada Shira sings. The bank of Radha Kund is a divine, ever effulgent abode where the bees hum around the flowerful cottages of the Kunjas. <laughs> oh, fortunate Gauri, golden beauty, Giridhari, the crown jewel of lovers, who was victorious over the Arista demon, steeds you there on a jeweled bedstead and decorates you with wonderful floral ornaments. Oh, nicely tied, lotus-like girl. I will stand behind you and softly fan you with a whisk. Hundreds of waves will arise in the ocean of my bliss as I witness that pastime. The end of verse 76. Thank you very much, Rasamay. We should stop here. It's not necessary to overload. <laughs> Because so many. I, I was just feeling one. Thing. Please. So Mohan is actually in double bliss because normally it's the manjaris who have the privilege to ornament Swamini, to put the necklace, to paint her breast, to put the earrings, to make her braid. And Krishna normally has the honor to remove all the shringar. So today he has a double bliss. Not only he can decorate her, but she also allows, of course, to remove it afterwards. So I felt this is also just this feeling came how, uh, how merciful she is to Mohan today. <laughs> Thank you, Gopinath, for this final sharing. To conclude these words in a very nice way, sweet. So, Radhe Radhe Gurudev. Yeah, Radhe. Radhe Radhe Gurudev. All Vaishnavas. Yeah.